music. Hey, everybody. Welcome once again to Apostolic Children's Ministry Podcast. This is a very, very different uh, setting for everyone because we're doing it remotely. We have five different people in four different places, at least as far as I know. And this is Thanksgiving weekend, and we're all spread across everywhere. So uh, let's just go around. Uh, obviously, I am Philip, and then we have who's next? <clears throat> I don't even know what order we are on your guys' screens. So who's next? Somebody. I'm Jennifer. Someone. That's Jennifer. She's actually <laughs> in the other room. Uh, we couldn't figure out how to make her not echo without physically removing her <laughs> from from uh, near my mic. I want to keep beside me. I get it. That's fine. But we're excited she's here. This is her first time ever on the podcast, Jennifer. Woo -woo. Thank and we're you. super excited because uh, she is now officially part of Sunday School. I say officially because she's been unofficially since ever, forever. Uh, but now she's actually working with Liz in the toddler class, which is super exciting. <laughs> and uh, Liz, thank you for browbeating her into that. <laughs> no, <clears throat> she didn't have to be talked into it very hard. She's excited. It's neat when you have a, a toddler of your own. And so that was kind of the impetus of her being in that room initially, but now uh, she, it's it's exciting because she is really good at it. So we're excited that you're you're in the in the team yeah. officially, Jen. Even though Thank you've been you. doing behind the scenes stuff for ever. Thank and you. then we have. Uh, start? Yes, exactly. A lot of us start as toddler teachers, being in the class. <laughs> I say started as toddler teachers. You made it sound like all of us started as toddler <laughs> teachers. That's, that's not what happened. Uh, that's what I thought you were going with. Uh, but anyway, we have Liz and we have Bree. And then you have this little black dot here. That's actually Julian. Apparently, he's in a, a very dark room. Um, I, actually, I think he has he's on cell service. And so we have audio. So, Brother Julian, can you prove that you're alive? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, we will push on and pretend that all is well. Uh, but we had a great week this last Sunday. And just because we're all out of town, actually, my wife and I are in Branson, Missouri, of all places. We have driven 5,000 hours to get here. Uh, it felt like it, uh, but we're, we're having a, a, a good time. But we didn't want to miss the recording because what an awesome Sunday we had. Um, we did our Thanksgiving dinner, and Bray, you were involved heavily in the scheduling of the classes and rotations. So, why don't you just kind of describe roughly, just in general details, what that Sunday looks like? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, this last Sunday, we had our Thanksgiving Sunday, and we did um, BBS style. So, we instead of it, everyone being in their designated normal classroom spots, um, we had them divided up by their age groups, and they had rotating stations through the um, the meal area. We had a skit section. We also had games and songs outside, and we had a lesson area too that was in another um, building. Um, so divided up by ages and things like that, we had about 20 minutes each section with about a five minute um, transition time between each station. Um, and then it was, it ran a little bit longer than our normal one hour uh, segment of time. I think it was about an hour and a half, maybe two. Uh, yep. <clears throat> so on this one Sunday, we have special dispensation to go longer. We talked to pastor and he's always good with it on us on a Thanksgiving. So typically we have a split session service where we do a uh, Sunday school and then we follow it by a worship service. And during that worship service, we take the bus riders home. But for this particular Sunday, we did it the full length of class. We had our classes, again, like she said, about an hour and a half. And then that last 30 minutes, you know, we have kids outside playing. I think a couple of the routes did pinatas and stuff, and we'll kind of discuss that in a minute. Um, and then we uh, took them home. And then I we jumped promptly in our vehicle and drove for uh 12 hours yes 11 hours oh my and got goodness. to albuquerque new mexico at one in the morning so that was that was fun yes. and when we got to the room someone was in the room when we when jennifer was about to unlock it that's always a fun I way to get greeted oh, no. yeah yeah but we did get free far. free breakfast vouchers for the worst breakfast that's ever been served on the planet earth as far as i can tell that's why it was free it was, was it was right. filthy. They should have paid us to eat it. It was bad. Like, I'm not picky, but it was bad. Genuinely hideous. What was it? 
it was, it was just, just it, hell. I literally it looked like potatoes. It, out. <laughs> it was bad. Oh. She really did. She like filled her hand and just said, I'm done and walked out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we're off track again. Surprise. <laughs> Welcome to our podcast. We're always off track. We're off track more than we're on. Uh, but let's go to to the Sunday morning before the, the classes even started, because we had a phenomenal uh, morning before 10 o'clock even came around oh, no. because we picked up our biggest what? What just happened? Nothing. I thought we were we're good. We're good. Yeah, we're fine. We won't go there. Bring those. I'm we're good. so scared right now. I don't even know what we're talking about. I'm just going to pretend <laughs> that, that nothing happened. weird just happened. I thought you were starting really early in the morning. We're good. Just keep going. <gasps> yeah, no, no. No, but we're good. We're just keep going. With the <laughs> oh, we're going to get there. <laughs> Oh, yes. We're going to get at 530 in the morning. But after that, we had our bus ministry. We went out and we picked up a bunch of kids. Last week, we broke our our uh, bus contest number, which we had set at Brother Julian had set that for 125. And we broke that number. This is a big deal because so we've been cool. pushing there for a while. But Sunday, we set a new goal of 150. And we almost hit it the first Sunday. Yeah. So why don't you tell us, Liz, because you guys had the biggest route. Bri uh, Liz and Bree are uh, both on the orange route. So Liz, tell us how many total we had on all the routes this Sunday. I think it was written in there. I don't remember. I know how much our route. Was. Okay. How many did you have? Let's start there. What'd you have? So on orange, we had um, two buses go out, and combined, we brought 44. Oh, my Lord. That's awesome. So they brought 44. Uh, Blue Route brought, was it in the 30s, I think? They were all in Or was it in the 20s? 20s? Yeah. So good this week. I Green 25, it. yellow 25, red yeah. 20s. Everybody yeah. was in the 20s except yeah. orange, who had to be extra, and they <laughs> <laughs> brought in the 40s. I think, but we brought a total of one hundred and forty-two yeah. bus riders. We almost so broke the contest uh, before the contest. I mean, like on the first day, literally the first day that thing that, that it was introduced, uh, it almost broke it. It's just fabulous, and there was families, whole families there, not just kids. It was yeah. teens and moms and dads, and ah, oh, just incredible. It was so incredible, good. incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Why don't you guys tell us a little bit about that number? So you guys hit 40 something. Mm -hmm. um, you guys have been doing some really neat promotions. I've been seeing those every week, but what kind of stuff have you been doing? And what do you think the biggest factor is in your growth on your route? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I, what do you think a factors or multiple factors? I think um, definitely well, the whole team, obviously like that. It, it, none of this would have happened. Obviously, without Jesus, obviously, he's the one that gives the increase. And we've been really praying for a lot of just not not only new kids and new families and stuff, but and we've been really, really wanting to see us bring whole families to church and stuff. And, and God has definitely been doing that in our route. Um, we are trying a couple of different things. Um, we're, we're, in regards to outreach, we're trying to do more in-person outreach, um, going during our, our normal Saturday scheduled outreaches with the, all the other routes and things like mm -hmm. that. But we're also trying to do another outreach as a second option in case mm -hmm. some of our uh, team aren't able to make it on that particular day. So we're trying to do more outreach throughout the week, um, texting, calling our parents. Um, and we're really trying to follow up with a lot of our um, potential. If you guys hear something, it's my son who was taking a nap and now apparently no longer is. <laughs> So I apologize, um, Sorry, guys. but we've said this over and over that our podcast is, is real. Like we don't, we don't edit it. We, nothing. So if you want, Jen, you can mute, mute it, or I can mute it, mute it from my end and undo it later. But, um, we're good. We're totally good. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. I think Lincoln was excited and wanted to share some stuff about Sunday too. <laughs> yes, he was. Um, but, um. So things like that. So trying to do a little bit more outreach throughout the week. Um, and we're really wanting to start doing kind of a different theme or like a new promo each week. So um, we'll pick one of our team members on the route to 
come up with an idea of like, okay, well, what is a, like a new fun thing that we could do throughout this week? Like we'll give you um, some ideas, things that you guys want to do to um, make it just extra interesting. So like a couple of weeks back, um, one of our teammates um, did like a bubble Sunday theme where we like had like bubble machines and stuff. So when the kids came on and off the bus, we had like a bubble palooza, things like that. So just something, it doesn't have to be like anything extravagant, but just making it something out of the ordinary than just picking them up and then promoting that throughout that week. This is an observation from the outside, but it seems that your growth has also been eerily timed to when you guys started doing midweek outreaches in addition to your Saturdays. Is that fair to say? I would think so. I think that definitely has a, a part to play. And Liz has been really, really um, excellent about doing that. She's always super awesome about volunteering for doing a different kind of day throughout the week. And I just can't because of my work schedule half the time, but she's really good about that. And a lot of our teammates do try to um, go with her while she's out there too. So that's super neat. So Liz, why don't you talk to us about those midweeks? Uh, what do you guys do and how do you make them consistent? So um, I am not working this year. I have my baby. So I think that gives me a lot of freedom. Like Bree works a lot and she does a lot. Um, I don't have that like rigid schedule. So I'm pretty available during the week. Um, and so I'll just let people know like, hey, this week, you know, Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, whatever, whatever. I give them an option of days. These work for me. If one of them work for you, let's do it that day. Let's go. Um, that works really well. But what I think has also helped a lot is a lot of people don't know how to outreach. Like a lot of people don't know how to talk to people. A lot of people you're knocking on the door and you're like, oh my goodness, please do not answer. Let me leave a flyer for you. Like that's yeah. very real. Mm -hmm. So I think what has helped a lot too is making really good connections with our workers having them come to doors with me or with Bree and they get to see how we talk to people because when we talk to people, we don't want to be like, Hey, there's a church service. Come if you want, don't, if, don't, you if, you don't, want, don't you if you don't want to, don't if you don't want to, you know, we just got some weird feedback. feedback. I don't know where it's don't coming from. from. Somebody's, Somebody's phone. phone. Hello. 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 Bree, I think Bree, it's yours. I think. I think. Yeah, I think yeah, it's from you, Bray. Uh oh. Mm. Should I go away and come back? <laughs> no. Do you have Do you have earbuds or anything? I can go get them. Here, let, let me see if I can turn echo cancel cancellation. Oh, it is on. I'm gonna mute you and find out. Test, test, check, check. Yep, it's you, Bree. I muted your mic and it went away. <clears throat> Do you have earbuds you could throw in? I have you muted, so I can't hear you. Okay, I unmuted you. Is it still feeding back? Yeah. Maybe I go away and then I come back. Maybe that'll fix it. I had a phone call come in and it ruined everything. Okay, you want to try that? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. And in the meantime, Liz, you can continue on. So, so um, more outreach stuff. I love that what you said about teaching them how to do outreach, because some people, yeah. they may do outreach, but they may not really understand how to do it. Um, like you said, that fear of not even wanting them to answer the door is not healthy, and you're not going to have a good experience uh, with, with that kind of mentality. So, it's oh, here comes Brie again. And we have feedback. <laughs> oh, my God. That's okay. Uh, that is weird. And how did he start a camera? So he's on my left. Um, so, yes, I feel like that's very real. And I feel like I, I do see that a lot, especially with younger people. Um, so I really think that once Bree and I started really making good connections with our workers, teaching them how to invite people to church, and even for those that are a little more nervous, sending them to our regulars, 
so that they can build and develop that relationship and then we could go to new doors until they're a little more comfortable it's been working out really well because when you go to a door you don't want to be like there's church if you want to come come if you don't want to come don't come whatever it want you, we want it to be like there's sunday school this sunday we come pick up kids in your area do you know blah 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 do you know blah 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 they come on our bus and it's so much fun and we want to compel them to come and we've been really working on that and i feel like that's one of the reasons like our outreach has changed in that way so much. Like Bree and I really encourage each other. One of our new families came because we were knocking the door of a regular and then we saw another little girl outside. And I think I had told Bree like, oh, go give one to them. And we had one more flyer left over and that led to what, 15 people from that one door. And so it really works well when you're with people that you have good connections with obviously you're spreading truth you want to be there you want to have people come with you like that drive really changed everything in my opinion that's such a good point what you said though i i've seen people on outreach walk right past somebody on the street mm -hmm. and not invite them because they're not where they're supposed to be mm -hmm. they're not behind a door they're not uh yes. in in the position we expect them so we literally pretend they're not there Mm -hmm. That's crazy to me. I, we're, we're there to talk to people and people that are outside of the home. I don't know what it is. Generally have a much better response than those that are inside the home. Mm -hmm. uh, at least it seems uh, there, you have a higher percentage of them responding in a very positive way. Usually it's, you know, very upbeat. You know, you get the occasional you know negatives like you do everywhere else, but that's great. I love that. Anything else you guys want to talk about for outreach stuff and Bree, you haven't said anything. You're probably afraid to unmute that mic. Said so giving feedback. So far, so good. Oh, okay. We can't talk, apparently. Um, no, but but just to reiterate what, what Liz said is uh, definitely being an encouragement to each other and understanding that we're all on the same team and there's one sole reason why we're out there and why we're doing this. It's not because of anything that we're doing, it's not because of how good we can talk to people, it's literally so that we can bring souls to church and see God save. I love it. Very cool. So we are now going to transition into our Sunday school. Um, works. Uh, ooh, freak. I'm sorry. Your mic is killing me. Okay. Uh, so we'll go into the end of Sunday school. So Jennifer um, was with the toddler group. So we broke our kids into four different groups. We had the toddlers, which is the four and under. We had the uh, five to eight year olds. We have the nine to 11 year olds, and then we had the youth, which is the 12 and up. So we had them split between different areas and then they traveled around and Jennifer traveled with the toddler group. Uh, Liz and Bree both were with the skit group, not the skit group, but the skit area. And so they were one of the stops that those groups went to. So if you've done vacation Bible school, this is nothing new to you, uh, but it's a very interesting, different way of doing Sunday school where the kids are traveling to different areas and each of those areas is repeating the same skit or lesson or songs four different times. Um, so, um, Jennifer, why don't you talk to us about that experience? This is your first Sunday, probably I would assume in that environment. So what was your overall feedback of the, of the day and the type of type of Sunday we did? Yes. I love the way it all went. Um, I've always been behind the scenes, maybe in the kitchen, helping serve, or setting up so I've actually never went with a group from each session I like I said I've always just been in one area um so it was different our group was very small I think we started out at first with maybe five kids compared to the other groups of like 80 and 90 <laughs> so we had we had more teachers and more helpers than kids which was fine because at first the kids were unsure of big being outside in the big open area when we went to songs but they eventually warmed up. Um, so we went from the songs, kind of a game area. And then we went into, um, I think it was like a lesson area with Sarah Booker. And she brought it really down to the toddler's level and did a really, really good job um, talking about being thankful. She did a lesson on, you know, the 10 lepers. 
he had band-aids and gave each one of the kids a band-aid to put on an owie or something. And she had them all over her nose, her forehead, her hands, and was just talking about how with leprosy, you know, you lose limbs and flesh and then talked about the the one that went back and how he was completely healed. And um, it was really good. The kid did a wonderful job in there. But then we moved from there and went to, um, oh, the food area. The kids all ate and they did giveaways. And then from there, we went to the skit session. They did really good in the skit portion until kind of somewhere in between they got a little lost. But I think it's just toddlers, you know what, you have like five minutes of their attention and they're gone. But other overall, they did good. And I think everybody in every session did incredible. It was really well done. Yeah, toddlers are challenging. We were actually discussing this in our post Sunday assessment, just trying to figure out what we need to tweak and do better for next next year. <clears throat> and uh, they're they're definitely challenging, as as Liz knows, as the, the head teacher in that class. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't have the same level of understanding in many of the areas, and their attention span is much shorter. So these sessions are twenty to twenty five minutes long. For five to eight-year-olds, as long as you're mixing it up, you know, you're doing different things during that time period, man, they're on board. Yeah. But those those young ones, it's tough to keep their attention for any length of, not any length of time, I'm sorry, but but for over, you know, four to five minutes mm -hmm. without physically moving their bodies is, is tough. So um, we're, we are thinking what we can do next year, and we do have some ideas, Liz. We'd love your input on, on that later on. I'd love to hear uh, about it. Yeah, so these are the four different areas. We had the lesson area that was led by Sister Sarah Booker. Then we had the eating area, which was, uh, man, what a big team we had to do that. Yeah. So my mom ended up cooking four turkeys mm -hmm. and deboning them. I was supposed to do two of them, but she did mm -hmm. them all. Like she said, nope, bring them to me. I'm going to take care of it. Um, then we had Leia do two turkeys. Uh, Sarah did the mashed potatoes. Um, Liz, you went and did a massive Costco run and picked up so much stuff. Oh my Lord. Uh, you literally filled the corner of the kitchen. Mm -hmm. Well, you did a fabulous job. Um, and then we had stuffing that was actually by the school. They had a bunch of extra from the school. And then we had another, uh, another dish. I just can't remember. Um, man, what was it? <laughs> What was it? Oh, mac and cheese. That's right. That's right. Mac and cheese. Uh, so, I hey, Bree, why don't you tell us about, <laughs> well, she is sitting sideways. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but she is sitting at an angle. So you have to, we have to oh, all do this to I look at her. I don't know how to keep it upright. <laughs> hey, so, uh, so Bree, why don't you tell us about that mac and cheese? Well, it definitely had, um, Stuff. <laughs> that was so appropriate. You, you, while she's talking about the mac and cheese, the calamity that just happened is exactly the calamity that happened earlier in the day. I don't know how you can burn and undercook something at the same time, but that's exactly what happened. And like, I made slime out of food. Like, I have to like research. <laughs> Fine, I'll hold it. I'll use manual labor. <laughs> this is so appropriate given the topic. Um, so as if last year wasn't bad enough, I had to top myself well, this year. Can, can can we recap last year real quick? Yes, uh, thank you. <laughs> well, why don't you just okay. kind of tell the tell tell the people what happened well, last Thanksgiving? <laughs> I was a willing vessel and wanted to make turkey because I they needed help making food. So I was like, okay. How hard can it be? And so I grabbed, I think, I don't know if it was one or two turkeys. I don't even remember. But I'm up until like 4 a.m. the day of because this turkey is still the most frozen. And I didn't read the directions that you have to thaw it out like three weeks beforehand. <laughs> and so now I'm like trying to <laughs> So like, she, when did you pull it out? Was it the previous night? Like I'm when you're about to shove it in the stove, in the oven? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was like 8 p.m. And then oh. so, I was like, yeah, I'll just make all of these. It'll be fine. It'll be fresh and ready in the morning. And then um, several prayers later, it was still frozen. And so it's like 
It's time. So, wait, has so been last been. year I got a text, <laughs> something along the lines of, I have been bathing this turkey all night long in the sink, <laughs> trying to get it where I can put it in the oven, but it's still rock hard. I'm so sorry. I have ruined Thanksgiving. I will go buy every rotisserie chicken that the store sells and I will replace it. And That's it was funny because I think we already had plenty of turkey. So it was not a big deal. It was like an extra. Well, so it was not was a big extra. deal. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of extra. So this year came. So I get a text and, 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 and can I just read it? Please, or or yeah, is that, yeah. is that, a, is that yeah, appropriate? Is that, no, yeah, yes, there's nothing obscene in there. Yeah. Oops. So I get a text at 5.30 a.m. <laughs> Sunday morning, 5.30, that she's already at the church cooking mac and cheese, right? Okay. So, uh, oh my goodness, where do we start? <clears throat> Way before Let's 5 a.m. Okay. Oh, this is going to be good. Okay. This is it. I will now be leaving the country as I am on the brink of ruining Thanksgiving, Christmas, Hanukkah, New Year's, Easter, birthdays, and Memorial Day crying faces. Um, What happened? And then you wrote a plan B. That's what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? I'm not saying. Should I be scared? No, because I'll cry. I'm going to Staters and purchasing all the Stofers. I made three pots of blob. I'm resigning from everything. I am Jonah. Throw me overboard. Save yourselves. Also, do not come before to the church before 7 a.m. I deserve capital punishment. I said, what are you trying to hide? My shame and humiliation. All I make are science experiments. I will also buy a new trash can. <laughs> That's what I got. <laughs> and then I get to the church and uh, there were two pots full. And I, I promise you, this is going to sound like I was not being a smart aleck. I actually made the mistake of asking Brie, what is that? <laughs> Because it looked like oatmeal. It looked like five gallons of oatmeal. How do you dissolve macaroni uh, noodles? I don't know, but that's what we did. And so, I, as soon as I realized, oh God, that's the mac and cheese. <laughs> I had people carry it straight to the dumpster and dump it. So Erica Tirada went to go dump it out. She came back with this scared look on her face. She said, I can't get it out of the pot. <laughs> so she had a, oh, she spent about 10 minutes scraping it into the dumpster. Oh, oh, oh gosh. all the wonderful memories. Oh, yep. That's, that's what I'm here for. I will now be bringing ice for the rest of my life. <laughs> the phone call is really way to live. Even scientists can't recuperate and do what I did. No, they will never be able to do what I performed that morning. <laughs> you know what? The kids did not have mac and cheese, but we have something better. We have yeah. a story for the yeah. ages. For future generations. <laughs> oh, but everything else went oh. really, really well. Yeah, Toronto family served. Yeah, er, er, everything after that. <laughs> uh, Toronto family was incredible serving. The kitchen, my daughter-in-law, I want to brag on her, Brella is phenomenal like she is mm -hmm. so organized and she ran that kitchen so well they served close to 300 plates mm -hmm. and I <clears> in wow. short order wow. well the kids didn't eat big big stuff oh. in fact we we learned so we actually went through and we audited all of the uh, food items that were left, like what do we need more of next year? What do we need less of? And so I made notes of that. And so mm -hmm. with what you purchase, Liz, you know, we can go off the receipts and we can adapt for next year. So this is this is really good. Cool, cool. <clears throat> yeah, so pretty exciting. But it was really a good day. The eating area was awesome. That's where I was most of the time. I did move around a bit to take some pictures. Um, but for the most part, I had to help serve and then clean the tables. Because when you have 300 people eating, it, it's it gets pretty wild yeah the other group was the songs and game area that was tristan and italia booker they were outside there's like a shade structure that they were under <clears throat> and they did a great job there story skit area is you guys and you guys i, I don't quite frankly really know what you guys taught on because i wasn't able to stay in there long enough so why don't mm -hmm. you guys just describe it what'd you guys do 
Yeah, so Sister Leia um, did such a great job at getting everything together and planning it. And um, I'm not sure if she made the skit or if she found it or did both. I'm not quite sure. But either way, it was really, really cool. Um, we taught about having a thankful heart. And essentially, the whole premise of it is you have um, a family. You have a mom, which was played by Sister Leia. And then you have... Um, daughters or siblings and that was myself um liz and one of our sunday school kids and she did a phenomenal job by the way Amazing. um being like i think that was her first time right i yeah. think being in like a big Is camilla? Skit like that yeah mm -hmm. yeah she so, so camilla good. she also did a a weekly devotion a few weeks ago <clears throat> so if oh, you want to know yeah. who she is uh, she is an up-and-coming uh, Sunday school teacher, at least we, yeah. we pray and, and, mm -hmm. and, and trust because she's very, very good. And yes. she's one of the most excited, outgoing, friendly, cheerful people I know. So she would make just a rock star of a Sunday school teacher. She so. really she would. Was. I was very proud of her. Um, but you have a family and you have Liz and I who are like the most ungrateful, uh, individuals. It starts off with mom making dinner. Um, I did catch gross. that part. I got. I heard okay. Liz be very ungrateful. Boy, she. I, if so, I remember, it was something it, like, "Mom, like if you had tried to buy the worst things the store sold, you did a great job," or something like that. It was really rude. Yeah, my uh, child told me that once. So <laughs> she said that was coming from real life. Uh, um, so anyways, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, you're fine. So. We get in trouble and we get sent to our rooms um, because we didn't appreciate dinner. And so mom tells us to pray for a thankful heart. So that's exactly what we do. Um, we start praying like, God, please give us a thankful heart. Da, 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 da. And then Keith comes out and he is a thankful heart in manifestation. And he has like this gigantic heart costume on him and stuff. So he's this thankful heart that follows us around for like the whole following day and is correcting us when we're unthankful so that we can make sure to like be thankful in whatever situation that we're currently in. And if you don't um, know who Keith is, the guy is a nut. <clears throat> he's, he's so amazing. I can only imagine that thankful heart following me around all day. I'd be terrified. He's a heart with like a whack-a-mole hitting him on the head. <laughs> yeah, an inflatable that bat. was It was the correct me stick is what he had. Yeah. But it was so good. Um, so then as the skit goes on, um, we start to learn about how uh, we need to be thankful in all, in every single moment in life kind of thing, referring to First Thessalonians 5.18, um, in all things give thanks kind of thing. And that kind of is the summary of the lesson of the skit. But with much improv and lots of funnies in between. <laughs> so. Awesome. Now, Jen, you you talked about the lesson area a little bit where Sarah was. Yes. So she talked for 20 to 25 minutes or 20 minutes. Sorry. Uh, I know she had a few different magic tricks and some some other things that she was planning on doing. Do, can you kind of fill us in on that? Because I didn't so, get get in there so much. She had like a, a box. Um, it looked like a gift box. And inside it were all the things that she was thankful for. And so he'd pull something out and tell the kid, you know, there was like a shoe in there. I'm thankful for her shoes. Um, just, there was just a bunch of different things in this box that she was thankful for and was just saying how, you know, we, we need to make sure we're thankful for everything that we have. Um, then I told, she talked about the 10 lepers and um, she did have the only like kind of object lesson magic trick that she had was she had a black scarf on and it could turn inside out. And, you know, she told the kid how, you know, being unthankful, you have a black heart. And when you're thankful, you're, you know, colorful and vibrant. And it was really neat. Oh, That's I cool. Like that. I think she did a different adaptation for the different age groups. <clears throat> yeah. Because mm -hmm. I, I know she had like, uh, she borrowed one of my magic trick things. <clears throat> oh, yes. But... She did do the coloring book. She used okay. the coloring book one and talked to the kids about, you know, how, you know, we're blank and then there's pictures and then how you add the color to the life. Oh, that's cool. That's really neat. Very cool. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> the songs and games. I know they played Battleship. 
outside. So they had a curtain mm-hmm. separating two sides and then there was plates with numbers. If I got this part correctly under the seats or on the seats or something. And so one side would call out a number or something and it would hit the other side. Mm. Do you guys, Jen, do we they do that with your group? We didn't do that with our group. Um, with our kids being so small, they used the um, snowballs and just threw them back and forth and had like a snowball. That's right. Fight. They had a snowball flight fight oh, with cool. crumpled up papers, I believe. <clears throat> yes. Oh, nice. Yeah. So they did that. They did action songs. Uh, they definitely kept it lively. <clears throat> so it was a, it was a fun, fun day. Uh, and of course the, the overarching theme of everything was being thankful. And the week mm-hmm. before we talked about keeping Jesus first, even during the holidays. <clears throat> and I think we did our best, uh, on this Sunday, even though it was Thanksgiving and a lot of fun. And, uh, Oh yeah, we did giveaways as well. <clears throat> Very poorly. So I, I went and bought yes. these giveaways. I had them all ready. I was going to give them away during the dinner area. I was going to do tickets and all this stuff. And then we got busy handing out plates and promptly forgot I even had them <clears throat> and never passed out any. At the end, I think it was the last 20 minutes, I realized that, oh my word, I have all these giveaways. So I just ran away. I gave Jen, I gave your group some, right? Yeah. I gave Tristan some, Sarah some, and I just said, just be creative and hand them out some way. I don't know. I don't even know what they did, but what a, what a ding bet. <clears throat> I had it all <laughs> carefully planned and none of it happened. Oh, well. I it did how happen, you but feel. it's not the way you thought. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I'll say. We both experienced it that day. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah <laughs> I, I, I'm not saying nothing. Okay. Um, Anything else about uh, the rotating Sunday school stuff? Mm. If not, how about the pinatas? Did you guys do the pinatas or were that other buses? No, I had no idea that was going on, but that's cool. So there was two routes that did it. I know. I think it was red and yellow, I think. Oh, that's neat. I only know because I printed them out. Or blue? Maybe blue? Probably blue and yellow. I don't remember. Maybe? Uh, but they no, stayed after me. after all the buses left, and they had a couple pinatas that they had the kids uh, beat up and get that get is candy so to take neat. Home. That's cool. It yeah. is super cool. <clears throat> really cool. I'm glad our bus didn't, only because I had to hit the road, and we That's had true. a long, long, long Oof. drive. Mm-hmm. But uh, anyway, uh, but they, it, it's apparently working because blue was the second biggest. I think he had thirty something last week. So so proud and of them. They've grown this week. so much, so quickly yeah. too. They have. It's been been incredible. Uh, is there anything else you guys want to talk about about this Sunday school? Because I do have one other topic that I want to just bring up real quick. We won't drag this out mm-hmm. needlessly. I don't think so. Okay, mm-hmm. I I want to talk about the importance of the the post event assessment, <clears throat> like on how important it is to learn from past events to make the next one even better. So uh, this was kind of cool because me and Jennifer were on the road. We had plenty of time on our hands and we started talking about working our way through the day on what we could do different, what we could tweak, how we could improve for next year. And then in the chat, this is after we were doing it. I didn't even know you guys were doing this. Uh, I saw something else in the chat. I think it was Bree. Did you post it? about making a list of things we can improve for oh, next time and mm-hmm. send you. I was like, that is so cool. So we were all doing it oh, to nice. make next year even better, such as the food thing. Like we know that we bought a little too much corn, but <laughs> almost perfect. No, but that was hardly at all. Like hardly any, like we had one pack too many, but oh, everything okay. else was almost on the nose. Perfect. Like it was unreal. Like literally the last group we were able to serve seconds to like five or six people, and then we ran out. It was unreal. Oh, <clears throat> nice. Perfect on, on almost everything. So we wrote that stuff down. We okay. wrote about tweaking for the toddlers. <clears throat> we wrote about different um, – I don't remember. You have that You have that list somewhere, Jen, but it's not important. Yeah. What we put on it isn't as important is that the fact that we did <laughs> You know, go through. And while it's super fresh on your mind, while the event has just taken place, you try to think about it and say, what can we tweak for next year? Because I promise you, no matter how smart you are, a year from now, mm-hmm. it will feel You're like you have it. never done this before. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. Okay. Like it's, it's, it just seems like, oh, well, we'll definitely remember that the toddlers <laughs> can't sing action songs for 20 minutes. Like that. But we won't remember that. 
Um, Unless it's written down, you will not remember and you'll repeat the same mistake over and over again. So uh, let's talk about that. The importance of post assessment on an event, but also in everyday Sunday school. So like every Sunday, we should be learning from our Sundays. Every time we do bus ministry, we should be learning if possible from what we did right and what we did wrong. Yeah. So let's expand on that just a little bit. We're not going to drag this out, but how do you guys, do you guys have a routine for that? Or is it just something that just kind of happens in the normal course of duty? Like for bus or Sunday school? For both, for bus, Sunday school. Because, you know, we and when we have our monthly trainings, remember mm. how we hand out those papers, the assessment papers, and we give ourselves the scores, you know, one to 10 yeah. on communication and preparedness and a level of commitment and prayer yeah. and all those different things that we're, that we're judging ourselves on. Nobody else mm-hmm. even sees these papers, right? Right. But the whole point is that, you know, six months from now, if we do that exact same assessment, we can look back and say, I was at a, a one with how prepared I was every week. Um, and now here, six months later, I feel like I'm like at a six or seven. So I've really improved. <clears throat> you know, mm. that's the whole point of that. So yeah. I think it's really cool to have something like that, maybe not as formal, but on an every week basis, like in the toddler class, you know, maybe after every Sunday, mm. you know, you're just thinking what went really good today. You know, I think yeah. Sister Mercado did an incredible lesson. Uh, you know, the, the kids were really well behaved and this is why they were well behaved. Maybe we mm-hmm. had more help in there than normal, or maybe they really liked the snack or I don't know. I don't know. There's, there's stuff that went really well, but yeah. there's also, and we all know <laughs> stuff that didn't go good. Yeah. No matter, you never have a perfect Sunday. Yeah. And you think, what caused that hiccup? Is there a way we could have prevented it? Um, <clears throat> so what are some ways that we could do a weekly assessment, both in Sunday school and bus ministry? Maybe mm-hmm. not formal, but just kind of like a, as Bishop calls it, mid-course corrections, where we're constantly just tweaking the, adjusting the rudder to get us back on track. <clears throat> yeah. Um, I know... Um, not in a very formal fashion, um, but I know sometimes Liz and I will kind of talk about, um, like for example, bus and like how pickups went, how drop-offs went, um, if there's anything that we can do different to improve, um, A, B, or C, or what worked really well, and maybe we should try to, uh, duplicate that the following week. Um, it's not like, like for your route, for orange route, like, how do we not be 30 minutes late every week? That kind of stuff. You know, little... <laughs> well, we you. have had that conversation. And we weren't late this time. <laughs> ah, I'm, I, I, it's, it, it's just low hanging fruit. I shouldn't even, shouldn't even do that. No, I, I'm, I'm being cold blooded. No. Saturday, we were there at 940. Saturday. Sunday. <laughs> We were so early. We were there the we day We came before. 24 hours early. <laughs> to make sure. <laughs> I really am just picking. But stuff like that is, is oh, unless have... you make a change, it's not going to, nothing's going to change right. on its exactly. own. You have to formalize that. Like we right. have tre- tweaked our, our pickup route on our route over yeah. and over. And we feel like we have it optimized. You know, like we're going to do pickups in this order. But now we have like a totally new system that we've been doing where we'll pull up and we have, okay, you guys get out and you're, you're now running and waking this up and I leave, I just leave them on the route and then I'll go to the next one. I'll leave them on the route and I'll leave them on the route. So we're, we're just dropping bus workers off. We're not even picking kids up for 20 minutes. Yeah. And now that they're all dropped out, then I'll circle again and come pick them up one at a time. Oh, Um, that's cool. So yeah, we're, we're, we're back now and I'm not flexing on y'all. But we're back by about nine thirty. That's Friday. Well, it does help when you're five On minutes Friday. down the street. <laughs> this is very true. So we definitely have the the uh, the blessing of being very close to the church. So our our furthest pickup is like ten minutes from the church, maybe fifteen, mm. as opposed to thirty <clears throat> for you guys. So yeah. that is a major benefit. 
But um, each route, I think, definitely does have their own uh, little routine that definitely works for them. Um, like I've noticed, we we are now at a point where we do have to have a split pickup. Like there's no way we'll be able to pick up everybody on one bus. One, because yep. it's not enough seats. And two is because we'd have to leave at like 5 a.m. <laughs> We're going to hit all of our stops. Um, so we have devised, we've kind of been tweaking it each week as it goes, but I think it's getting a little bit more solid now is we have now a route where no matter who's on that route, it's pretty much the same pickup, like the same addresses that we're picking up each week. So it's not like it's constantly changing as much, um, but we're trying to keep it to where a certain, you know, the one group is one pickup or the addresses are relatively close to each other. The second route is also relatively closer, close to each other um, and trying to get that on a weekly routine um, so that whoever's in charge or running those two routes, it's not the stops aren't constantly changing and the bus drivers are starting to get a better routine of where all the addresses are too. So I think that definitely helps with time. And then we do, um, we don't per se fib, but we just <laughs> request that the families are ready at like 845, even though we won't be there at 845. I got it. <laughs> so, I get it. Um, so that definitely helps. And then letting the parents know that we're on our way to kind of give them more of like a heads up kind of thing. So we just try to give and ourselves. Everybody as knows that every route has a problem stop. <clears throat> There's mm -hmm. usually, you know who they're going to be before you even get there. Yeah. The ones that you're waiting 10, 15 minutes for. And so you have to sometimes make tweaks for that family, like, you know, yeah. that family. Hey guys, we're, uh, be ready at eight 30, even though we know we're not going to be there till nine 15. Cause they need yeah. that little nudge nudge. Yeah. Maybe we're that family we're calling and texting ahead while we're on the way. Maybe that family, we have someone specifically go out and wake them up. You know, if they're close enough, you guys are pretty far away, but, um, they're mm -hmm. they're Yeah. You have to know your people, <clears throat> know your people. Mm -hmm. uh, so more than anything with this topic is, I want to encourage both our local group in the lighthouse every Sunday in our classrooms, what, what went well, what didn't go so well and how do we get better every week and how yeah. do we maintain the good things that we, mm. that we happen this week and bring those into the, into next week. And while we're attempting at the same time to, to maybe pick up those items that slipped a little bit. Mm -hmm. So it's a challenge. It's, it's, uh, Definitely, it's not easy. It's easier to talk about than it is to implement, <clears throat> but I think it's, it's, it's part of the process of, of having what my, my dad always calls a five-star church to get to where we want to be. <clears throat> you have to always be tweaking. You have to always be tweaking. Yeah. Brother Zach Wells says it all the time. He says, when something is going really, really, really well, that's when you better change it because it's about to start failing or it's about to start falling mm. apart. So, yeah. so you can never sit on your laurels and just enjoy it because things are going to start breaking because nothing, nothing lasts, nothing lasts forever. We got to always be adapting and tweaking. <clears throat> so anyway, anything else on that note, sister Liz, Jennifer, you guys want to tag in on that or no? Okay. <laughs> No, you got, you're fine. There was no need to. I just didn't know if you wanted to say something. So Sister Liz taking care of a child. Uh, we are 47 <laughs> minutes in. So I have, this is an, a very different type of podcast. Um, <laughs> we're all all over the place. place. We've had some technical difficulties, Brother Julian and, and Breeze Mike decided to go nutso on us. But <clears throat> it's been a good time. Thank you guys for being with us all. And we have enjoyed being with us. God bless. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.